What's up guys, welcome to Sugar Heights, PA David here in an Answering Your Questions episode. On my A1C video, Adrian W asked, can you make a video about A1C and the novel coronavirus? Well, to be honest, I haven't really gotten into coronavirus yet because I really just started making these as the whole pandemic was getting underway. Um, I've been sort of working my way through the different types of diabetes medications and had planned on kind of going through those before getting into other topics. But considering everything that's been going on and everything you guys are all hearing in the news every single night, I think it does warrant kind of a quick diversion so that we can talk about it. So in this more casual uh, format of a video, let's go ahead and talk about how the coronavirus affects people with diabetes. You have probably heard over and over again that people with diabetes are one of the many groups of people who are at higher risk of concerns with uh, COVID-19. So let's talk about what that means. Um, because without explanation, it can be kind of scary because you don't really know what to do with that information. Now, in all disclosure, I am not an infectious disease specialist. I'm a diabetes guy. But we can talk about what the virus does and how it's transmitted and how it affects diabetic people. This is a respiratory virus, which means that it's transmitted through respiratory secretions, droplets, and breathing. And that means that we are all susceptible to being exposed to it the same way. There's no difference between a diabetic person and a non-diabetic person in terms of likelihood of being exposed to it. We all have the same chance of getting COVID-19. The difference lies in how we respond to it. Clearly, people respond to this virus in many, many different levels of severity. Some people get it and have no symptoms at all. Some people end up in the hospital and sadly some people pass away from it. And there's this whole spectrum in between of symptoms and severity. So in terms of how that relates to a person with diabetes, as I'm sure you're aware, diabetes isn't really good for you. And when your glucose gets higher and if it's elevated and, the, and it's out of control for a long period of time, that will result in a lot of changes in your body. One of those changes is more difficulty resisting infection and recovering from infection. Wounds don't heal the same way. If you get sick, you don't get better as quickly as you otherwise might, okay? Now, it's not just having diabetes that puts you in that circumstance. Particularly when your diabetes is poorly controlled, that's what the big risk is. So if you have good control of your diabetes and your A1C is where it belongs and you don't have a lot of other complications, there's a good chance that even if you did get exposed to this uh, COVID-19, that you would respond to it and recover from it in the same way as a person without diabetes would. If you have other pre-existing conditions like pre-existing heart disease, uh, pre-existing lung disease, other immunodeficiencies, that kind of thing is what really starts amplifying the risk. The other concern about having COVID-19 along with diabetes is the havoc that it can wreak on your diabetes control itself. Having an infection, you may have noticed, makes it really tough to keep good control over your blood glucose. The same medication that might have stabilized you before suddenly becomes not enough. That can even be further complicated when you start getting symptoms like vomiting, nausea, things that could possibly dehydrate you. If you don't have the ability to take in the normal amount of food or particularly fluids and you start getting dehydrated, that raises the possibility of things like DKA, non-ketotic hyperosmolar syndrome, if you happen to be a type two diabetic, nothing good comes out of dehydration. And that's a major concern when people with diabetes start experiencing some of these symptoms um, above and beyond just the annoying cough and just kind of feeling blah that viruses can oftentimes cause. On top of that, when you're nauseated and you're not eating as much, that can put you at greater risk of hypoglycemia. So somebody who has a viral infection like COVID-19 and if they're experiencing decreased appetite, if they're experiencing nausea, if you're using insulin or strong medications that tend to cause hypoglycemia like sulfonylureas, like glipizide and glyburide, things like that, you're at greater risk now of hypoglycemia. So dose adjustments might need to be made. Bottom line is if you get sick, you need to really closely watch your blood sugar. You need to maintain hydration. You need to keep snacks close by in case of hypoglycemia. And if you're just having too much difficulty maintaining your blood glucose, 
absolutely reach out to your health provider. Uh, there's telehealth visits available even if you're not able to get into the office. Make sure that you're getting the guidance of the care that you need because you don't want to just let this go if your sugar levels are getting out of control and you're not able to maintain it. The only other thing that would be really smart to take into consideration when dealing with diabetes amidst COVID-19 and the supply issues is that you want to make sure that you have everything that you need. You need to make sure that you're keeping up on your refills. Take a look at the supplies of medications that you have and if you are getting to the point where you're starting to run low or you know that you're going to be able to run low, it is taking longer in some circumstances to get a hold of your physician or your healthcare provider in order to get refills. Make sure that you're not waiting until you're out to call them because you do not want to run out of insulin. You don't want to run out of your medication. You don't want to run out of your testing supplies. Be really proactive about planning ahead and making sure that you're adequately supplied and in a worst case scenario if you are an insulin using diabetic who is running low on insulin and you're on an, a prescription only version like say Lantus or Traceba or Humalog or Novolog or Pedro, one of those where you have to have a prescription and you can't get a hold of your healthcare provider, if you can't get a hold of whoever's providing your refills for you and you are about to run out, remember that there are non-prescription versions of insulin available. Nobody ever has to be without insulin if you are dependent on it. Regular human insulin like Humulin R, the Walmart version rely on in both regular and NPH versions. They're available for anybody to buy cash, no, even without insurance, even without a prescription. You never have to go without insulin. It might not be the best insulin in the world. It might not be our preferred option, but especially for a type one diabetic, you can't run out of insulin. So there are options out there if you're not able to get a, a refill in a reasonable amount of time. All right, guys, I hope that that was helpful. I know that this was just kind of a casual conversation with us, just winging it, but that's what I can offer you on, on COVID-19 and being a person with diabetes. Keep investing in yourself. It is going to be okay, and it's gonna get better. And I will see you guys soon on the next Sugar High.